When you watch movies like Sherlock Holmes or TV series like NCIS or Criminal Minds, a murder mystery cannot be solved without clues. After Paul and Barnabas performed the miracle in Lystra, located in what is now known as Southern Turkey, the pagans there thought that they were gods. Paul vehemently denied it and directed them to the real God. Even if God was invisible and the pagans of Lystra do not know him, God left clues in the many beauties and bounties of creation. Proof of God's existence was explained to the people of Lystra differently from how it was explained by Paul to the people of Antioch. In Antioch, he went on a lengthy discourse on the history of Israel culminating in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Lystra, pagans were ignorant of the history of Israel and so Paul's approach was to focus on the crops and rain and the food and pleasure that they were experiencing. Today, many still question the existence of God. Here is one example in simple logic. A man went to a barber shop to have his hair and beard cut as he always did. He started a good conversation with the barber. They talked about so many different things. Finally, they came to the subject of God. I don't believe in God, said the barber. Why do you not believe in God, asked the client. It is very simple, said the barber. Just look around you. You will see so many sick people and abandoned children. Many people are suffering poverty and oppression. Everywhere there is pain, tears, and blood. If God existed, he would surely not let all these things happen. The client sat silent for one minute, thinking, since he did not want to start an argument. The barber finished his job, and the client went out of the barber shop, paying his fee. Just after he left the barber shop, he saw a man in the street with long hair and a beard. It seems that he hadn't had a cut for a long time. Then the client again entered the barber shop and he said to the barber, Know that barbers don't exist? How come they don't exist? asked the barber. I am here and I am a barber. No, exclaimed the client. If the barbers existed, there wouldn't be any people with long hair and a beard like that man walking in the street. Ah, uh, barbers exist, but these men do not come to me, said the barber. Exactly, affirmed the client. That is the point. God does exist, but unfortunately people do not go to him and that's why there is so much pain and suffering in the world. Here's a more experiential proof of God's existence. But a Harvard-trained brain surgeon wasn't so sure until he spent a week in a coma and came out with an incredible description of the afterlife. My co-anchor Terry Moran has a story. A mild afternoon in Lynchburg, Virginia, and Eben and Holly Alexander are at a high school soccer game cheering on their 14-year-old son, Bond. They are a perfectly ordinary American family with an extraordinary story they have been touched by a medical miracle and maybe more. I mean, it was impossible after impossible after impossible. Eben Alexander, a Harvard-trained neurosurgeon who was a skeptic when it came to religion, survived a near-death experience, and he now carries the memory of what he says was a journey to heaven, a journey that all his scientific training cannot explain. On November 10th, 2008, Eben awoke with a searing headache. When his wife Holly checked in on him, he was having a tremendous seizure. And I said, say something. And he didn't say anything, so I called 911. Eben was rushed to the hospital where he worked as a neurosurgeon. The only word we could truly make out was help. And the rest of his verbalization was purely uh, screaming. Eben Alexander had been stricken with an extremely rare and virulent E. coli meningitis infection that was ravaging his brain, plunging him into a coma. I mean, I was trying to die. In fact, doctors gave him almost no chance to live and told his family if he did survive, he'd be brain damaged for the rest of his life. Did you go to heaven? Yes. I mean, in, in every sense of the word, that's what my what my experience showed me. His first recollection, he says, was being a speck of pure awareness in a dark and murky underworld. And then I was rescued by this beautiful spinning white light that had a, a melody, indescribably beautiful melody with it, that opened up in, into a bright valley. Just an incredible, rich, ultra-real world. Uh, of indescribable complexity. God was there, he says, and he encountered him through an orb of brilliant light. He soared on the wing of a butterfly with a beautiful young woman as his companion, and the young woman gave him a message to take back from heaven. You are loved, you are cherished, there's nothing you have to fear, 
There's nothing you can do wrong. It's a beautiful vision, but heaven? A lot of people are going to say, Doctor, it was a hallucination. Your brain got zapped by this disease, all the wires got crossed, and you saw a girl on a butterfly wing, and you were spinning up in a melody. I know this was not a hallucination, not a dream, not what we call a confabulation. I know that it really occurred, and I know it occurred outside of my brain. So basically... Uh, but how? How can he even suggest that, much less claim that his experience is proof of heaven, as he's called his new book? He showed us his brain scan. It wasn't leaving any part of my uh, cortex unaffected. So your conclusion is because all of this outer area, which is the higher functioning, was covered with the infection, what you experienced in the coma wasn't part of the brain. Right. Many neuroscientists are deeply skeptical of Eben's claims, arguing his brain must have produced his vision somehow, most likely as he came out of coma. But something else happened. After he recovered, Eben, who was adopted, saw a picture of a sister from his biological family who died years ago, a woman he never knew. And I knew who my guardian angel was on the butterfly wing. It was the most profound experience I've ever had in this life. Your sister, by birth, and from a family that you didn't know because you were adopted, who died several years ago, who you had never met, you saw while you were in coma. Yes. And that was the key. That explained everything. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, grant me the grace to see you even if I don't, to believe and to experience your presence and love for me in my day-to-day -day existence. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless couples for Christ.